So I do know a, a managing broker that actually just wrote a check. So that's the recovery fund. Like I said, you can guarantee that the 20, 50 things going to be on there. That's actually a very common uh, question. How are we doing? All right, let's talk about agency relationships. We have talked about these people, so we're gonna kind of breeze through this. We all understand who the broker is, a client, what a customer is. Remember in-house agency, that's where one of my agents is the uh, listing agent and one of mine's the selling agent. Limited agency, one agent working for both the listing and the selling side on the same deal. So as, here are some of the duties. Eh, he said duty. All right. As a licensed agent, you are representing the person with whom you work unless there's a written agreement to the contrary. And I told you this is one of the major changes here lately that now someone has to actually say you're not my agent. In the old days, they usually they used to have to say you are my agent. Now it defaults to I start working with them. I have agency unless they write something that says you are not. Or if I'm only giving them customer level service. So I automatically have agency unless they say you're not my agent or I'm actually giving them just customer level service. If I don't have, or if I do have agency, this is that minimum level of services act, letter B. Remember, if you have agency, you've got to perform at least the minimum. Number one, receive offers, present offers in a timely manner assist in negotiating the offers and three re time, re respond timely respond to all of their questions those were the minimum level that we talked about that one day here it is in the law firm that created that if you fail to perform these then you could be subjected to penalties because this is our minimum level if you are representing a seller, so number 3A and 3B, we actually can do at the same time because follow along. Your agency with either side is exactly the same, except where it's not. And where it's not the same, it will make logical sense. So if you look at 3A and 3B, you can see that they are virtually the same thing. Your job as representing the seller is to fulfill the terms of the agency that you made with the seller. Well, with the buyer, guess what? It's the same thing. To fulfill the terms of the agency that you made with the buyer. You will you disclose the nature of your agency to the relation to the seller. Remember the written office policy? That's the whole positive power coefficient thing. We can talk about it all day. So you have to disclose to the seller, you're their agent. You have to disclose to the buyer, you're their agent. Number three is you have to promote the seller's interest or you have to promote the buyer's interest. So far, they're exactly the same. Letter A says, you must find a price satisfactory to the seller and that he will not accept less money. On the buyer side, guess what you will not disclose? That he will pay more money. There's the only one that's different, but it makes sense. If you're representing the seller, you're not going to disclose, he's going to accept less than what he's offered. Hey, it's listed at 180. I'm not gonna tell you he'd take 150. And on the buyer side, it's the same way. We offered you 150, 
I'm not going to tell you that he said we could go up to 180. You must present all offers to the landlord or seller immediately, just like you would to the buyer immediately. You disclose any material defects. You have timely account for all the money, exercise reasonable skill and care. All of those sound familiar. Those are the fiduciary responsibilities. And you must comply with all the state federal laws. Well, letter B says the exact same thing. If you are on the buyer side, you owe no duties to the seller and the seller owes no duties to the buyer. You will also not represent that your buyer will pay more. You will also disclose any material defects to the buyer that you know. Letter F says that you are allowed to show that house to other buyers. And on the seller side, you tell the seller that you are allowed to represent competing properties. So on the seller side, you would say, yes, I'm going to list your house, but I'm also going to list your neighbor's house. I have the right to list competing properties. And for the buyer side, I'm going to show you this house today, but I'm going to show another buyer this house this afternoon. You are allowed to have competing buyers. So 3A and 3B are exactly the same, only from a different side of the table. The seller has to treat the buyer honest and fair. The buyer has to treat the seller honest and fair as well. Uh, duties representing the buyer. I guess it's three... I, I told you wrong, 3A and B are the same as 4A and B. 3A and B are the same as 4A and B, only different sides of the table. That's why you maybe were getting that confused look. 3A, representing the seller, you owe the following duties. 3B, you may not disclose any of the following information. He will accept less, what motivates the seller, or any material defects about the seller himself that was confidential. Notice four is the same thing with buyer. That's what we've been saying. Fulfill the obligations, promote the interest. Then there's 4B. You will not disclose that the buyer will pay more than the purchase price, what motivates the buyer to buy or that you will not disclose any material information about the buyer. So it's 3A and B are the same as 4A and B. Better? Then number five, mush those together and you get limited agency. A licensee may act as a limited agent as long as you have written consent from both parties. That written consent must describe the real estate. It must have a statement saying that you are acting as a limited agent. It will also have a statement disclosing that you are not giving any information to the other side. Number four says there's no imputation of knowledge, meaning that you don't assume anything, you only work on actual knowledge. Number uh, six, uh, has given this statement voluntarily. Letter B says that you may disclose and provide both the seller and the buyer with customer level service. So here's the problem with limited agency. You cannot disclose your opinions now. You can't offer help. Number letter B, says that you have, or yeah, B, that you will help them both with customer level service, not client level. So now you can't give advice or insight. So when they say, hey, 
what do you think I should offer? You can only show them statistical information from the neighborhood and said, here's what the properties have closed at. You make the decision. In my opinion, this is why it's called limited agency because you are actually limited to how much you are helping them. You can only give them customer level service. Now, there are some representations like the in-house agency, the licensee affiliated with the managing broker. You can be a licensee working as an in-house agency. That's where two of you, one has the buyer, one has the seller. That's fine, that's in-house. Letter B, which we just talked about, if you personally represent both the buyer and the seller, that is limited agency. Limited agency owes no obligation beyond what is disclosed in these last four or five things. Letter D says, as the managing broker, my job is to protect the information so that no one else can look at each other's file, especially on an in-house agency. If Shauna's got the buyer and Sarah's got the seller, I want to make sure Shauna doesn't come in and accidentally look at Sarah's file, which may have some confidential information. So I'm required to protect them from that, filing them in locking file cabinets, things like that. 